this is Samantha Cambo with the DuPont Building Knowledge Center, and we provide science you can build on. In this two-part series, I'll first cover thermal performance basics, then I'll go into how you can use assembly U-factor tables to determine insulation thicknesses required to meet energy code. In part one of the series, we'll be starting off with some key thermal properties and concepts. Our value, or thermal resistance, measures how well a material resists conductive heat flow. This means the higher the R value, the better the insulating properties of a material. Here you can see the average R value per inch of commonly used building materials. U factor, on the other hand, measures the rate of heat transfer and has historically been used as a metric to compare the thermal performance of window units. Assembly U factors represent the overall thermal performance of a wall assembly better than looking at the R values of individual components and adding them up. To summarize, the lower the U-factor of an assembly, the more energy efficient it is as a whole. Now onto the concept of thermal bridging. Wood and steel framing members that make up a building have low R values and steel is a highly conductive material. This is significant because heat always wants to travel along the path of least resistance and materials with low R values offer an excellent heat pathway for this. The movement of heat across materials more conductive than their surroundings is called thermal bridging. As shown here, when insulation is only placed between the studs, the steel serves as a thermal short circuit, allowing heat to move around the cavity insulation very quickly. This ultimately causes a thermal bridge and is a major concern because it can drastically reduce the thermal performance of the insulation placed between studs, which can contribute to building energy loss and potential condensation issues. As illustrated here, part of the reason why increasing the amount of insulation only within the cavity is not an efficient way to increase the effective R value of the assembly is because of the effects of thermal bridging. Even when up to R21 bad insulation is used, because insulation has solely been placed in between the conductive steel studs, there is no significant increase in the actual R value of the assembly, as shown. One way to improve this wall instead would be to add continuous insulation over the framing. Since 2012, the International Energy Conservation Code has required the use of continuous insulation, or CI, in the building envelope. By putting the insulation on the outside of the studs instead of solely in between them, this reduces or eliminates thermal bridging, improves the wall's overall thermal performance, and reduces the likelihood for unwanted moisture issues. You can learn more about DuPont's large portfolio of continuous insulation products, such as Styrofoam brand extruded polystyrene insulation and Thermax brand polyiso insulation on our website.